Hello, hello. It's another super rainy day outside. Gloomy. I ain't flying today. But you know what? I thought I would share something I've been wanting to share for quite a while. This tip could save your life. And at the medium, could save your airplane. Let me explain. What we're going to talk about today is the fuel system. And what I'm going to share may be common knowledge for some of you, but I'm actually surprised just how few do know about it. Um, fuel system in a 150 is fairly simple. You got a tank in each wing right here near the root, and the fuel line comes out of there and drops down to the fuel selector like that. There's a cross vent that vents between the two tanks. And when I say fuel selector, it's simply an on-off. You don't pick tanks or anything like that. It's either on or off. And it does not, the fuel selector, and I really should say, when I say fuel selector, you're selecting whether you want fuel or not. Um, the fuel selector does not prevent uh, cross venting between the tanks. So, you know, if you fill one tank up all the way, even if your selector's off, it's going to level out and drain even with the other tank. Okay, so then the fuel line uh, comes from the selector and it comes up into the fuel strainer or sump and then from there into the carburetor. Now, originally when the 150s came out, <clears throat> at the bottom of every um, fuel tank, there was a plug. And it was just a simple plug. You had to unscrew it and screw it back in. Then what Cessna did, so then the modification went to the fuel drain quick sump. Let me show you the issue. All right. Let's go over to the standard POH that comes with the 150. And I'm going to see how well this shows up. <clears throat> but it's the operating checklist. Okay, and you're coming in here, and it's showing the flow around the plane, how you're to check everything. All right, so uh, one, remove control, wheel, lock, check ignition switch, master, fuel shutoff valve, handle on, move the gutter, control, check control surfaces, ailerons, wing tie downs, check oil level. And you get here to five in this particular one. Before first flight of day and after each refueling, pull out strainer drain knob for about four seconds to clear fuel strainer of possible water and sediment. Check strainer drain closed. If water is observed, there is a possibility that the wing tank sumps contain water. Thus, the wing tank sump drain plugs and fuel line drain plug should be removed to check for presence of water. So the way that reads is <clears throat> that when you come in, it didn't have these quick drains in here. So when you come into your cowling, you had your strainer down there, which I've had the Steve's gascalator put on, so I got rid of that. But there's a strainer drain knob here. So you would pull it and check down there. If you found water down in that in the sump, then it's telling you to go back and pull the drain plugs out to check for the presence of water. And here's an interesting one, okay? And I just wanted to draw attention to this. Thus, the wing tank sump drain plugs and fuel dr line drain plug. And here's where the real fun is. The fuel line drain plug. And I'm surprised how few, even owners, are aware that this is down here. In fact, I have met four IAs that have worked on 150s that aren't even aware that this is here. Down on the bottom, underneath here, now here I've got the quick drain installed. There is a plug down in here that connects to the bottom of the 
fuel line. Let me explain what's going on here on a little drawing that I did. So, your uh, tanks are up here, right? And the fuel line comes out. Your seats, you know, or I don't know, they're somewhere in here. And here's your fuel selector. Okay, it comes into here. This is on or off. Here's your firewall right here. And here is your strainer. Of course, your carb is kind of up in here. Well, when it leaves the strain, the uh, fuel selector, you have a floor pan. That the fuel line goes down below there in order to get below the fuel pan, and then comes back up to the strainer. Let me ask a simple question: When you're sumping your fuel tanks and you find water, where's the water? At the bottom. What is the lowest point in this fuel system? Right here under the floor pan. Where is that plug? Right here. In all my years of sumping these planes, I'll be honest, maybe some of you have, I've never found water in the sump. Ever. <laughs> now, there's a, probably a reason for that. It's going to show up here first. I occasionally find, if it's been out in the rain for weeks, I hang her it, so I almost never have water, that the little quick drain valve in the fuel tank may or may not have water. But I've found the most amount of stuff down here. So if you're checking here and you find water, that pretty much tells you you've got water down in there. Now the mod came out to quick sump this, okay? I've seen quite, quite a few 150s have that quick drain on there. But out of the four other 150s, and I've dealt with this, four other 150s, owners, one knew it was there, the others did not. Now, two of them had the fuel quick drain, the other one just had regular drain plugs, they never had that put in there. Let me explain why this is such a big deal. <clears throat> Alright. So we're going to talk about this right here. So when water gets down there and it's at the lowest, what else get, gets down there at the lowest? Sediment. Any kind of debris in the fuel is going to wind up down in the bottom, right down there. They say that putting that quick drain valve in was one of the number one safety modifications to the Cessna 150. I can vouch for that. About two years ago, I ended up going out to a 150 that went down in a field. Um, didn't know why the engine quit, didn't know what the deal was. Went out there, they expect to tank the, to have to take it apart and trailer it out, but it landed on a farm field, uh, in a farm field on a road between the fields. I mean, it was like a mile and a half runway. You couldn't have landed any better. Went out there, I took a look. Pull the compressions through. Okay, we got compression. Um, first thing I did is verify you have fuel in. Yep. Tanks, you just filled them up. Hadn't been in the air about 30 minutes. Okay, got fuel. It's like, uh, well, it's fuel getting to the carburetor. I pulled, verified the fuel selector was on. Went in, pulled the sump. No fuel came out of the strainer. Huh. Well, went back and... Uh, took a look at everything and I went down there to go ahead and sump that drain valve and he goes oh that thing hasn't worked in, since I've had it well guess what a wrench a screwdriver and about two minutes later I was dumping more garbage out of that line that had completely sealed off down there all the sediment had gotten down in there even water you have to have enough pressure in order to force water to up and into the sump. It had so much junk in there, it had finally just closed off and fuel wasn't flowing anymore. Flushed it all out. Engine started right up. Good to go. Blew it out. End of story. Well, put a new drain valve in there. Now we know that... Uh, it was uh, good to go. It's 
story number two. That same day, later on, there was a flight instructor. He says, uh, hey, you know that thing about the fuel drain valve? He said, uh, mine hasn't worked in years either. Well, his planes used a lot for flight instruction. Went over, checked it. Um, same thing. The fuel drain valve hadn't been used in so long, you couldn't even activate it. Pulled it out, garbage flowed out of there. Same issue. It was just an engine failure waiting to happen. Fast forward to about a week ago, Cessna 150. Setting in a hangar over here, they can't figure out, apparently the engine had quit on it, can't figure out why it won't get fuel. Fuel was getting down, they thought they would, were going to have to take the selector out and all of that. Said, have you checked the drain plug down on the bottom? No, what's that? Showed it to them. That's a drain? That's a fuel plug? Uh, now, I know that may sound like, man, they're not good IAs, but they kind of are. This is just a common thing for some reason that's really overlooked. So... The point of the story is, after two engine failures I've seen, a third possible, and another 150, that I don't know the condition of it, but it hadn't been checked, and he said he got junk out of it. Look, before your next flight, verify. Does it have a quick drain? If it does, sump it. Here's the problem. That's not part of a typical checklist. And most of the time, there's a lot of instructors when they don't even know what's down there. They're sumping all the drains, sumping the, the uh, main sump. I have no idea that that's down there. Does that work? If it doesn't work, my suggestion, if it doesn't have the drain plug, or it has just the drain plug and not the quick drain, have them change it out. Get yours changed out. Have it put in there. Make it a part of every day's pre-flight. That's where the most amount of junk is going to show up. It's kind of important. And if it's not working, stop. Get that flushed out. Get that cleaned out. You may be surprised what's down there if it hasn't been working for some time. So really important safety modification, really important check. Get that plug drained out. Get a quick drain in there. Make it a part of your daily pre-flight. This could save your life, could save your airplane. We'll see you on the next one.